Hey everyone, this is Ghostu Dad, and welcome back to Season 5 of the Blizzard Online Ladder. Uh, today we'll be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be casting live as we play. It looks like a TVT on Antigua's Shipyard against a slightly favored Terran. I'm uh, going to be casting live as I play this game, so I'll be getting to see the economy and production tiers of Buddha's SE2 Ladder in person and live. We'll see if I'm able to cast and keep up with the commentary as I play. The last time I tried this, uh, it did not go well. <laughs> About halfway through, I just stopped talking. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully this will save down on some of my casting time, uh, selecting those SCVs, misclicking them into the middle of the map, and uh, wishing my opponent a good luck. Have fun for the game, and off we go in Antigua Shipyard. So We've uh, played this uh, map before a couple of times uh, in previous seasons. This is not a map that's new to this season. There's a little area back here with these um, uh, these hiding smokes, so you got to make sure that you scout that out properly. And uh, as before, we will try to build our SCV after, sorry, our starting supply depot um, after the. Uh, Ninth SCV, so here we go with that first supply depot. So now playing against Terran, there's some um, uh, debate as to whether you should really wall off. How much does that gain you? Uh, one of the disadvantages of walling off is it does um, give your opponent an opportunity to hit your uh, production structures, production structures from the low ground. Um, a tank or even units running up here can uh, take out a supply depot or even a barracks. So uh, there's some debate as to whether. You really should be walling off in a Terran versus Terran game. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and get a scout out to see. I don't know how important that is at this point. Let's go ahead and get a scout out and see if we can find out where our opponent is. I'll just guess that he's over here and uh, see how that goes. And don't forget, we've got our uh, command sir. It needs to be hotkeyed to 1. Light my barracks, hotkeyed to 2. And as soon as I hear that SCV ready, I should be building an SCV. Uh, now, in this case, I wonder, hmm, maybe let's just go ahead and get a gas started here. Now, as players are more advanced, they're able to scout out each other's bases and detect uh, tech pathways based on things like when does this refinery go down, etc. I'm um, really not keeping up with that uh, SCV waiting. Oh, looks like nobody's here. Let's go and scout up this one. SCV ready. Um, looks like this. And... Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and seal up this wall just so our opponent won't be able to see what's going on inside the base. I'm going to close this off and I should have enough to go for an orbital command right away, which is just great. And um, oh, look at that. I barely stopped that SCV from coming in. So it'd be interesting to see if um, his base is up here. Oh, it looks like it is. Go ahead and start working on this tech lab. So it looks like he's going for an early tech lab. So uh, I'll back him off and just see if my opponent is going to expand. And my upgrade is complete. And I've just been sitting my SCV there. I need to go ahead and start building a... Um, so my idea is to go for a 111 build, building a barracks and then a factory and then a starport. Um, getting an extra barracks along the way. SCV ready, got to keep those SCVs pumping out and watch out for that uh, supply block here. We're already at uh, 20 supply and we'll be continuing to put marines out. And then as soon as we hit um, that 100 mark from the uh, refinery, going to go ahead and start with a factory. So uh, you just need to be keeping up on the um, the production here. So my idea is once I get, uh, I don't know, a couple of tanks and uh, a banshee or two, I'll go ahead and send out this group and uh, we'll see how far, how well that, that does for us. So getting a double refinery up and running, let's go ahead and get that, um, go ahead and get that uh, tech lab down. Now my opponent already has a tech lab, so I should be expecting some early tech from him, maybe some tanks. Uh, but quite possibly uh, some marine upgrades. Not quite sure which upgrade path I'm going to go on. Um, okay, we can get these guys on too. And uh, we should be able to lift him up and plop him down somewhere else. So making use of that hotkey that I have on um, uh, that I have on my guns. Is it even worth buying? Like that and get the siege. Ooh, not able to get the uh, siege researched right away. Why am I doing that? Let's just go ahead and pump out some more 
Uh, guys there at, ooh, come on, let's research this thing. Now I'm not really sure that it's important that I research that siege mode, especially if I'm going to go in for an early attack. really need to get more guys more on gas there, and just got to keep up this SCV production. And I have plenty of supply back here, and you know, it almost is tempting me uh, to go ahead and um, expand, but uh, alright, okay, so we've got this starport down I'm gonna go ahead and start working towards a um, uh, start working towards a banshee here and see I have just so many minerals I'm not really sure that this is worth um, worth getting started there we got the and two more guys there and add on complete so I should be getting a banshee out pretty quickly so I think at this point I can support one banshee and one siege tank at a time and a couple of marines um, so a maxed out uh, single base, a maxed out single base can handle about three barracks pumping out marines at a constant rate, um, and one siege tank and one banshee or medevac coming out. So uh, uh, banshees are a little bit slower, so um, we'll see uh, if how how much how tightly this um, this rate is for making these units. So we've got a bunch of units up here. Um, move these guys back. This going to get damaged. Move him down here. Yeah, he's actually at a at a pretty good disadvantage um, here with uh, those units that he picked out. Now I should be able to. Uh, Okay, yeah, that was a really good engagement. Now let's go ahead and grab a couple of uh, SCVs here and uh, bring them on the defensive here to uh, repair the tanks and the Banshees. And let's go ahead and build a couple more units. And I think we can just go ahead and send them out and attack, which will be just uh, great here. Let's go ahead and get that guy down. And I'm not really sure if it's worth it to go ahead and try to build another round of guys um, before this tank comes out. Okay, and we're going to have another tank here. Look at that. That's a pretty nice little squad here. Let's, uh, let's send them out. Um, We'll send them around that way. <laughs> uh, just checking out a little bunch. They're all going to bunch up on each other and stuff. Uh, so I really should just be continuing to build additional stuff. Ooh, additional supply depots required. So getting behind on this um, macro here. Okay, so if I can sucker these guys away. Wow, look at that. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, those those SCVs are on auto repair. That's pretty cool. So let's bring them up here. So this this game is is being interesting here. Um. Oh, let's see, let's kill that SCV. Uh, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. This is kind of an intense moment here. Wow, this is actually going better than I thought it would. <laughs> wow, who would have known? Kind of an all-in there would have done uh, would have done this much damage. But uh, yeah, I guess it works. You know, pretty strong units coming in really quick. And uh, sorry to stop talking. They're just kind of interest, uh, pretty 
intense trying to ma um, uh, micro what was going on here with this group. And uh, he says GG, but he's lifting off. Not quite sure what what that means. <laughs> All right. Well, boy, that was a pretty crazy game there. <laughs> I didn't expect that that move out would uh, cause that much damage, but uh, you know, the, I think that game was pretty quick, uh, 13 minutes. So let's go ahead and look at that replay, and we'll uh, just do a little bit of um, on the cuff uh, casting right there. Ooh, I should have gone back. Let's take a look at the um, uh, match history here, and it's gonna take a while here. Here we go. So looking at the match history, um, you can see that uh, resource-wise, economy-wise, I was actually, we're pretty much on par, resource collection rate. Uh, he did build uh, more workers than I did, so um, so that was kind of interesting, looking at the graphs here and looking at the resource collection rate. We were basically on par with each other, and you can see that um, I basically wasn't using mules at some point, and so if he kept up with his usage of mules, he should be ahead. You can see these little um, bumps here as he was using mules. Um, and then looking at the... Um, uh, the units, I didn't train as many units as he did, so it'll be interesting to see um, what that means as far as the game is concerned. So let's jump into that replay, and we can kind of see what's going on from the perspective of both players. So uh, plopping on that uh, production tab, and we can see uh, the two of us are building away, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, much of a difference there is between the two of us. It looks like his SCV was built slightly before mine, uh, yes, yeah, slightly before his uh, SCVs are slightly ahead of mine, so um, not that much of a big deal at the beginning of the game as far as uh, when your SCVs are exactly built, but uh, any little bit of speed you can actually get is, is very helpful, although uh, just a couple of resources doesn't matter that much. Now, if there's any kind of specific timing as to when... Um, now, you notice that I built my uh, supply depot slightly before him, and so... Uh, I'm slightly ahead on that supply depot and that SCV, but uh, in general, basically just neck and neck here at the beginning of the game. And you saw how this um, Zilnaga Tower was very crucial. Uh, he had a defensive force here, uh, which was able to see um, my large group and my small group moving out. Now, it was very interesting that he chose to follow the two Banshees when they went across the map. So, in actuality, kind of my attack move strategy of moving everybody at once, which meant that the Banshees, because everybody else was kind of roadblocked behind the supply depots at the front of this base, um, the Banshees went ahead. They were actually able to kind of um, kind of push his little group away from my main group, which was coming up in a, lo in a long column which is the worst way for a group to travel. Uh, when they come in a column um, towards a group of defending units, then only the first, the, the units at the front of the column get attacked um, the most, right? And the units at the back of the column don't get to help out at all in, in, it, in uh, attacking. So it'll be interesting to see the two armies move across the map and how that um, column behavior um, affected the two groups. And that's maybe something to learn from this game is that when you move, um, when you move your units outside of your main base through that first wall, if you have a case where I did, where like they only had a small area that they could move through, um, it might be a good idea to have your units ball up at the bottom of the ramp just so you've got a ball of units again, which is a, a much more efficient way to, um, uh, to continue to run that. So he went for a tech lab and uh, has not made his orbital command yet, but he's got uh, three harvesters on gas, and so if we check out the income tab, he's much more gas focused than I am at the beginning of the game. And uh, checking out his worker supply, we can see that we are basically on par. So um, I've got a couple of army units, but he got a tech lab out. We'll see if he decides to do anything with that tech lab. Uh, and that'll be kind of an interesting... Um, looks like he's making a marine there. So that's kind of an interesting decision. He uses the tech lab to seal off his wall. Oh, there he goes researching stem. So he was looking for an early stem, and I think stem was done by the time that we had our engagement. So I'm going for a second barracks here. I think his second barracks is ahead of mine. Ah, uh, they're pretty close. So at this point, um, you know, I'm pushing a little bit ahead in the supply game. Uh, a couple more army supply and worker supply than he does just at this particular moment. Uh, but he's got stim researched, and if that finishes, that would have given his infantry a much stronger, um, uh, a much stronger uh, c uh, combat power potential than mine. 
So going for three barracks here, and then myself, I went for barracks, barracks, factory. So that does explain why, perhaps, um, I don't think he had, I can't remember if he had any tanks when I came in. But you see, I used my second barracks to go ahead and build the tech lab, which that means the tech lab will be done right when the factory is finished. And so that was kind of my strategy going into this, whereas on his side, he's using his tech lab to... Um, research stim and build these marauders so my infantry group was all marines um, and maybe a couple marauders near the end but in his case he's building marauders um, very much sooner than I am building a second tech, tech lab on this barracks interesting to see what he puts on the third barracks and um, looking at the two supplies we're basically on par very close to each other indeed the stim is almost done wow that's an interesting point that makes me think that um, in our engagements, if he would have used Stim a little more aggressively, he could have done um, a lot more damage. So the starport being built for myself, you saw the whole game from my point of view, so uh, we'll take a look at what he's got over here. So, ooh, researching Stim is almost done, and he's gone ahead and started on Combat Shield. Now this is an interesting choice because Combat Shield adds 10 hit points to all of his Marines, but if we check out the uh, units summary over here, he's only got 3 Marines, so he's got an upgrade that's only going to help 3 of his Marines. Now it will help them survive quite a bit longer um, when they are stimmed, because the stim will use up... Um, that extra health will be very handy for the stim. The marines won't be quite so vulnerable after they stim. Now marauders are really cool when they stim because they have 125 hit points. So they can stim several times and uh, gain the benefit of that enhanced uh, attack power. So these guys are coming in and they're coming into a group of already uh, 10 marines at the front gate and the siege tank almost on its way and siege mode is almost done. So. Uh, this group probably shouldn't, well, I mean, there's a, a small window where if they can come in before the tank comes out, they might be able to do some damage, but at this point, they are outnumbered by this defending force. And if we look at the supply counts, we're basically on par for army supply. So that means some of his army is back here at his base, moving out or moving across the map. So he's actually at a disadvantage running up into the base, which is uh, very typical. Now we'll, look, we'll get to see here if he decides to turn on stim. And now notice this, he's in a very interesting position here. He's got to have units up on the ramp just so he can have vision up into the high ground and he's deciding not to stim them which is kind of interesting why he decides not to do that and setting that guy in just for suicide oh no he's staying out here uh, surviving that so at this point we'll just take a quick pause on the game and look at the um, the units lost tab so we're basically on par six for six that's not too bad but if we look at another there's another tab here that talks about resources lost yeah, so here we can see that even though our units lost were very similar, he lost 500 resources um, out of that engagement, whereas I only lost 350. And that's mainly because he was attacking Marines, which are only worth 50, but I was able to kill some Marauders, which are worth um, a significant more amount of money than that. But he's got a second force coming in here, but again... Once he's lost that um, that group of units, he's at a, a pretty big disadvantage. So he's going to have to ball up another uh, batch of units to be able to um, hold off this attacking force. Now, typically, he would think, ooh, I hope he does. Uh, so he's going to lose these guys, too. That's another thing. When they're running up here, especially when you know that there's a defending force up on the high ground, go ahead and bring your guys all around the outside of this base and as you can see from this that see, that single siege tank the range that it has so when you're sending units up into the base such as Antigua shipyard bring them around the edge to try to get outside of that siege tank range now here he is balling up these units back here at the Zelenka tower which is a really good idea he's got a lot of vision of what's going on, on the map you can check out his vision here so he's bringing his units up into the middle there's a pretty good chance that when I come to attack I'll just be coming straight across the middle which is what I did Ooh, it looks like he's bringing units all the way down I'm not sure that's quite a good idea and now wow he's up to four barracks to a tech lab so he is building a bunch of marauders and this one's got a reactor so he should be pumping out three marines and two marauders at a pretty decent clip now finally building a factory and researching a weapons upgrade but again this is the point where I start to move everybody out so it'll be interesting to see how well these SCVs do I tried to put them on auto repair but I think they may have just been sent into attack. So here you can see the column of units. So if this column runs into his defensive force, these Marines are just going to get destroyed as they run up into the force. But thankfully for me, these Banshees scared him away, which the Marauders can't do anything to the Banshees, so there's no reason for them to be chasing the Banshees. But look at this. We've got the two columns of units going side by side. I think he can see that my group is catching up to him, and here 
we go. He's actually got an okay concave, but he's just purely outnumbered, popping on the hit points tab. You can see that those Marauders really didn't stand a chance. Do a quick pause and see what is left of my force. Um, we've got a handful of Marines, looks like two tanks, and four SCVs survived there. So those SCVs should be able to repair this one tank. And tanks have 160 hit points. That's pretty good. And one Banshee survived of the two. Um, so, uh, so that's interesting. Now I did take a short pause up here. I think it was right here. So for the SCVs to try to repair the tank a little bit, but I didn't pause very long, and that's pretty crucial. Now the other thing you can see here, let's pause real quick here, is that we've got a lot of minerals um, baked. I haven't been building SCVs, I haven't been putting down meals off of this orbital, com orbital command, but you can see how quickly, um, even across this long four player map, my units were able to move across the map. Um, I mean by the time that they moved across, it looks like I had a mule uh, done fairly recently ago, I only just now have enough energy to put down another mule. So even though the distances are somewhat long across this map, um, the maps in StarCraft II are pretty short, uh, which means that in his case, he had already started this, I mean you can see how far this command center has been built, he made this decision a while ago, I think he made it probably when he had his units sit, uh, sitting down here in the main, we could go back and take a look at that, um, but we won't do that for the sake of time. So. Um, he made a big decision here. That was to move out and expand. Now, I think what happened is he saw that I had a bunch of siege tanks at the front, and so he figured that I was going to stay on one base and just turtle up. And I think based on that observation, I do think that expanding was a, um, a valid reaction to that. If your opponent is going to stay on one base, um, expanding is a good reaction to that. That's going to give you an economic advantage, etc. What he didn't expect was that I was going to take everybody and move them out to attack, and that's just really bad timing for him because here is 400 minerals that are um, that were taken up by this command center when they could have been put into eight marines, which, you know, add eight marines to this mix, and, I mean, really, if he had taken this original group and tried to take, the, you know, I mean, basically he took the original group to try to stall my group, but if he had tried to pull them back to this group that was reinforcing, it may have been a much more even fight for him. But, uh, so as we saw, uh, just playing it live, I came and took this out, and I think he did cancel, which is a really good... Uh, excellent. See, he got 300 minerals back from that cancel, so he really only lost 100, but of course he could have used those minerals um, prior to this. Now, finally, using the stem to bring these guys in, uh, but there's just too many units here um, to counter that. Now, if we check at the income tab, we can see that um, he actually was higher on income than I was. I think that's probably from using some mules. I don't see any mules in the base, but, um, you know, he did have... Um, I think more, I think he made more workers than I did. So this was just, in some ways, just kind of a, a bad combination for him of the timing. You know, he'd expanded when I moved out, and he also was focused very um, completely on Marines and Rotters. And so my two siege tanks with, um, I mean, this Banshee is basically not getting damaged at all. Uh, the Marauders do no damage to the Banshee, and he's just getting kind of free hits. Actually, that's not true. He's almost dead. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, but, uh, but yeah. So, uh, a good game from uh, Yishan, and uh, a nice, uh, nice to have a short game that we could turn around and cast a replay as well, and uh, a nice uh, continuation of my victories against Terran down in the Bronze League. So, uh, alright, well, we'll talk to you guys later, and this is Ghost of Dad signing off. See you, bye.